Hello, I'm doing a DVD collection video, and in this video I'm going to be talking about my favorite horror films which came out last decade, um, from 2000 to 2009, and of course, uh, last decade is considered to be the decade of remakes, pretty much, like, pretty much every horror film you saw last decade, and even into this decade, has all been, like, remakes of older horror films, and... You know, so, I will admit, like, last decade and even into this decade, it's really not a golden age for horror films, but there have been quite a few horror films which came out last decade, which I consider to be really good. So, um, yeah, this is a list of my favorite horror films which came out last decade. The first movie I want to talk about is American Psycho, which came out in 2000. Now, this is a freaking amazing movie. Basically, um, in the movie, Christian Bale plays this, like, really uptight and arrogant uh, Wall Street banker who, as it turns out, is also a vicious serial killer. And it really is an awesome movie. It also has Reese Witherspoon in it and uh, Willem Dafoe. Uh, it really is a great movie. And, yo, know, and what I like about this movie is it's not just a horror film. It's also a, it's also a satire on, like, on the behaviors of rich people and how rich people, um, think they're, um, above morals. Like, it's kind of a satire on that, as well as a satire on 80s culture, because the film is set in the 1980s, and, you know, it's also kind of a drama film, and it's also a black comedy. Uh, you know, and when I say it's a black comedy, I... It really is actually a very funny movie. Like, um, you can't tell me the scene where Patrick Bateman kills that guy right after he talks to him about Huey Lewis in the news. You can't tell me that's not one of the funniest scenes in movie history. I mean, you know, it's a great movie, American Psycho. Now, this is also based on a book by Brenny Stinellis, and I have read the book, and, you know, and the movie, of course, it does change a lot from the book, but I personally feel like this movie movie does, um, I personally think this movie does do a good job at capturing what the book was supposed to be saying. Like, the book, like the movie, is basically a satire on, you know, the behaviors of rich people, but also male behavior as well, and because all the characters in this movie are pretty much, like, sexist pigs, and, like, and so is the main character, Patrick Bateman, you know, so it's like... Yo, know, really, it's like a statement about, um, really the... It's like a savage portrait of male behavior, basically. But it's a great movie, um, like I just said. And there's actually a pretty interesting story about this movie. I heard Bronny Stinellis tell it in this video I saw of him giving, like, a at some kind of seminar or something, and apparently, uh, before this movie was made, Christian Bale, uh, who plays Patrick Bateman, actually came to Bronny Stinellis, like, they set up a meeting with each other, and, uh, because apparently Christian Bale wanted to ask Bronny Stinellis for permission before he plays the character of Patrick Bateman, and apparently, like, when they met at some bar or something, and Christian Bale actually came to Bronny Stinellis in character as Patrick Bateman, and for, like, the first ten minutes of their conversation, you know, uh, pretty much he was playing Patrick Bateman, and apparently it really freaked Bronny Stinellis out, uh, so yeah, it's scary how, um, it's scary how much Christian Bale gets into his roles, um, but yeah, uh, American Psycho is a great movie. The next movie I want to talk about is... Shadow of the Vampire. Now, I already did a review for this, um, so you can go check out that review if you want, but this is also a really good movie as well. Uh, you know, it, it also has Willem Dafoe in it, and basically, you know, this is a fictional story about the people who made, um, it's basically a fictional story about the making of the film Nosferatu, and it's a really interesting movie, and basically the main concept of the movie is that the actor, Max Schreck, who played Count Orlock in the film Nosferatu, the whole concept of the movie is what if he really was a vampire. Uh, it's a really good movie. I definitely recommend it. 
Now, the next movie I put on this list, most people are probably going to laugh at me for putting this on this list, but I can't help it. I really do love this movie. I mean, it's not a good movie by any means, but it's a guilty pleasure, and it's Leprechaun in the Hood. Uh, Yo, I, I know, I just showed American Psycho and Shadow of the Vampire, which are two pretty serious horror films, and now I'm showing this movie, which is... Most people would... Most people I know hate this, probably would hate this movie, but I really enjoy it myself, um, because I love the Leprechaun movies. I mean, they're such guilty pleasures for me. Um, you know, and this is the fifth Leprechaun movie, and I've already done a review for this, um, like a... Like... Two years ago, I would say, I did, like, reviews on all the Leprechaun movies, so you can go check out those reviews if you want. Um, but yeah, that's Leprechaun in the Hood. Uh, the next movie I want to talk about is a film called The Resurrection Game, and I would like to give a little shout-out to, uh, a YouTube, uh, user, a YouTube user named, uh, Mr. Parka, who, um, did a review for this movie, so he's the one who really, uh, introduced me to this movie, and, yo, know, and this I actually really enjoyed, um, basically it's set after a, after this thing happens where zombies, like, dead bodies come back from the dead as zombies, and it's actually a pretty interesting take on the zombie genre because the whole idea is that now people have learned to like live with the zombies and zombies are no longer really a threat to people like they're still walking around but to people they're really just a nuisance really like they're just pests basically and you know and they do have people who are like hired to exterminate the zombies but basically it gets into it gets into something much deeper than that like it talks about how like the movie gets into this whole like government conspiracy and stuff uh it's a pretty good movie it's kind of like a horror comedy though and the film is you know, like it's a very independent film and you can definitely tell um if you see it like uh Yo, know, you can definitely tell it was made for a very low budget, and some people might not like it for that reason, but I that's something I actually really enjoyed about this. So yeah, that's the Resurrection game. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is Ghost of Mars, which is a John Carpenter movie, and basically this is set in the future, and basically in the future, like, uh... Yo, know, um, basically, like, Earth is getting overpopulated, so in the future, people actually go, um, people actually go to Mars and start selling up, setting up colonies on Mars, and pretty much, like, now there are cities on Mars, and people are now living on Mars, but what happens is, um, these, like, uh, people go to, um, this prison in this, like, mining community to transport a prisoner, and it turns out that all the people in this community have now been possessed by these alien spirits. Uh, you know, I actually really, I actually thought this was a really good movie. It's, uh, you know, co-written and directed by John Carpenter, and a lot of people hate this movie, but I personally love the movie. Um, so yeah, that's Ghost of Mars. Um, hold on. The next movie I want to talk about is The Devil's Backbone, which is an excellent movie. Now, The Devil's Backbone is... Uh, written and directed by Guillermo del Toro, who of course would direct movies like Blade 2, uh, Hellboy, um, Pam's Labyrinth, and this is set during the time of the Spanish Civil War, and it's about this young boy who is sent to live at this orphanage, and he starts seeing the ghost of a murdered boy, uh, you know, at this orphanage. Uh, it's a really good movie. I highly recommend it. The next film I want to talk about is Donnie Darko, which, uh, this, I, I'm not sure if you would really call this a horror film, but the thing about this movie is, this movie, it's almost a movie that seems to defy genre, like, defy classification, because the movie does seem to, like, overlap a couple of different genres, actually, like, um, it's a drama film, but it's also a science fiction film, um, but there are horror elements in this movie as well, which is why I put it on this list, but there are even some comedy elements in it as well, like it seems to be a balance of a lot of different genres, um, 
you know, so it's almost a film that really seems to defy classification, but uh, it's a really interesting film, Donnie Darko. Uh, basically, it's about this um, young man, this teenager played by Jake Gyllenhaal, who is, like, troubled, like, he's... Basically, like, uh, you know, he's a troubled young man, and, like, you get the idea that he might be, that he might have some psychological issues, and he starts seeing this, um, thing, which appears to be some kind of, like, giant rabbit creature, and it starts telling him, named, uh, Frank, and Frank starts telling him things that, like, the end of the world is coming, and, you know, it tur it ends up being kind of a time travel movie, but the movie also also gets into a lot of philosophical themes like the uh, like it talks about the existence of God at a few points in the movie um, you know it's just a really interesting movie it also has like Drew Barrymore in it and Patrick Swayze uh, you know and it's not really a horror film but I decided to put it on this list because there are things in the movie which could be considered like horror elements um, Yo, but uh, it, it's a really good movie, and yo, and it's a time travel movie which uh, really does deal with how time travel would affect like the human psyche. Because um, I remember a friend of mine was mentioning how there aren't really too many time travel movies which also deal with how something like time travel really would affect a person psychologically. But this is a film which kind of does deal with that, though. Uh, but yeah, that's Don. Darko. The next movie I want to talk about is Signs, which is directed by M. Night Shyamalan, and basically this is an alien invasion movie, but it's told from the point of view of this family uh, who live out at, at this farm. Um, I know a lot of people hate this movie, but I actually enjoy it. I mean, looking back on it, yes, the movie does have its flaws, and, uh, you know, and yes, the nostalgia critic wasn't entirely wrong in his review. I mean, it's... You know, the movie does have its flaws, but uh, I do enjoy the film myself. Um, I liked the whole character arc with Mel Gibson's character, how he was a priest who lost his faith in God, and, uh, you know, and throughout the film he actually starts to regain it. I, I kind of liked that idea. Um, you know, so I enjoy Signs, despite its flaws, and you got to admit, though, I mean, it sure as hell is a lot, is a hell of a lot better than... Uh, some of M. Night Shyamalan's later movies, uh, The Happening, you know, so, um, yeah, that's, uh, Signs, um, the next movie I want to talk about, I don't have on DVD, but I have seen this movie quite a bit, and, uh, you know, it's definitely one of my favorite movies, and that's 28 Days Later. Now, 28 Days Later is about a virus which starts spreading through the UK, and basically this virus causes people to go insane, and, you know, it causes them to attack other people, and if you get bitten by somebody with this virus, or if you get the blood of somebody with this virus on you, you will get infected with the virus as well. Uh, you know, it's a really interesting movie, um, and it's directed by Danny Boyle, who would go on to direct movies like Slumdog Millionaire and uh, 127 Hours. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is Bubba Hotep, which stars Bruce Campbell, who of course played Ash in the Evil Dead movies, and this is a freaking hilarious movie. It's a horror comedy, and it's directed, it's written and directed by Don Coscarelli, who also directed uh, the Phantasm movies, and it's based on a short story by Joe R. Lansdale, who um, is an author I've never read, but a friend of mine has recommended th that author to me a lot, so I gotta check out some of his um, books at some point, but yeah, Bubba Hotep is a really fun movie. Basically, in the movie, Bruce Campbell plays Elvis, and apparently, like, Elvis is now in a nursing home in Texas, and he's actually Elvis, but people don't believe him when they say he's Elvis when he says he's Elvis, like, they just think he was an Elvis impersonator who... And they think he's crazy and stuff, but it turns out he actually is Elvis. But he ends up befriending this black guy who actually thinks he's John F. Kennedy. And, 
yo, uh, and what happens is it turns out there's a mummy going around the nursing home, um, eating the souls out of people in the nursing home, and basically now Elvis and this, uh, black guy who thinks he's John F. Kennedy have to, uh, stop this mummy. It, it's a really fun movie. I mean, if you haven't seen it, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, hold on a second. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is House of a Thousand Corpses, which is written and directed by Rob Zombie, and this is Rob Zombie's first movie, and I know a lot of people hate this movie, but, and I can kind of get why some people wouldn't like it, because, um, you know, Rob Zombie's style, it's not really for everybody, um, but... I enjoy the film, uh, you know, basically it's about a group of, uh, it's been a while since I've seen it, but it's, like, about a group of friends who are writing, like, this book on, like, side, on, like, uh, roadside attractions or something, and what happens is they end up meeting this, like, psychotic family, uh, you know, it, it's a really weird movie, and it's, like, I remember, uh, the, uh, I think, like, uh, the angry video game nerd, when he did a review for the sequel, Devil's Rejects, he mentioned how House of a Thousand Corpses really felt like a really long Rob Zombie music video. And in some ways, that's kind of true, but I kind of liked it. It's a very surreal movie, um, yo, know, but, uh, and I can get why some people wouldn't like it, but I really enjoy House of a Thousand Corpses, but... I also recommend the sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects, which is actually a better film than House of a Thousand Corpses, even though I think they're both good. Um, the Devil's Rejects, I would recommend more. And basically, The Devil's Rejects has is a sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses, but at the same time, you really don't have to see House of a Thousand Corpses in order to get what's going on in The Devil's Rejects, and The Devil's Rejects is, really, really is just a great movie, like, it's more than just a horror film, it's also kind of like this, um, really over-the-top crime drama, as well as kind of a black comedy, and, um, yo, know, and... Like I said, even though it's a sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses, um, it really does have a very different feel than House of a Thousand Corpses did. You know, like, it's not as surreal as House of a Thousand Corpses was, and, you know, it's a movie that I would definitely recommend, uh, The Devil's Rejects. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is The Butterfly Effect, which... This is a great movie, but this is, dear God, this is one of the most depressing movies I've ever seen in my life. Um, yo, uh, I remember the first time I saw this movie, I was just like, wow, that sucked. Like, I didn't say it sucked as in it was bad, like, it was still a great movie, but it was so depressing that the ending was just like, like, I said, wow, that sucked, because, not because it was a bad movie, but it sucked for, like, the character. It's, it was just such a very depressing movie, um, and it's a time travel movie. It's actually very similar to Donnie Darko, because, um, you know, it's a time travel movie, which also deals with how time travel effect would affect somebody psychologically, and, uh, you know, it, it's a great movie, but it's a very depressing movie, so, um... You know, if there's somebody who, uh, doesn't like depressing movies, I would recommend staying away from this movie, but it's still a great movie, and I would definitely recommend it. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is not really a horror film, um, it's very, like, uh, I guess in a way you can consider it to be a horror film, but it's more of a drama film slash kind of an action film. Uh, it's weird. This is a movie that uh, does seem to kind of defy classification, but that movie is Old Boy, which is a freaking amazing movie, which, um, you know, it's about a man who was kidnapped and was locked in a room for like 15 years, and what happens is he's the people who kidnapped him finally let him go, um, but now basically he goes on essentially a, re a revenge mission to get revenge on the people who did this to him, and, 
you know, it, it's a great movie. I would definitely recommend Old Boy. It's not really a horror film, but I guess you can consider it to be kind of part of the horror category. And it's a, um, I believe it's a Korean film, a, a South Korean film, actually. Uh, but yeah, that's Old Boy. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is Shaun of the Dead, which of course is um, kind of a spoof on George A. Romero's movies, and you know, it's a horror comedy, and Shaun of the Dead is just a great movie, like I highly recommend it, but I also recommend it if you're a fan of George A. Romero's movies, because there are a lot of like really obvious nods to things like Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead, and Night of the Living Dead, like, um, you know, like, they use some of the same music from the original Dawn of the Dead in this at some point, um, you know, it's a great movie, Shaun of the Dead, uh, The next movie I want to talk about is the 2004 remake of Dawn of the Dead, uh, which is directed by Zack Snyder, who would go on to direct movies like uh, 300, uh, Watchmen, and he's directing the uh, new Superman movie, Man of Steel, and I have to say that I really enjoyed this remake. Uh, Yo, um, I know some people don't like it, and I don't like it nearly as much as I like the original Dawn of the Dead, um, but for, for a remake, I actually think this is pretty well done, and of course it's very different from the original one, because the original Dawn of the Dead was basically a political satire on consumerism, and one complaint that a lot of people have about this is it doesn't really have the same social commentary that the original film did, but the way I look at it is it's really just a different movie. It's a remake, so it's got to be different in some way from the original one, and I, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed this remake, so yeah, that's the Dawn of the Dead remake. Okay, so the next movie I want to talk about is... Hellboy, which of course is not really a horror movie, it's more of an action movie slash fantasy slash science fiction movie. Of course it's not really a horror film, but uh, it does have horror elements in it, and I decided to put it on this list because it is a supernatural themed movie, and it does have horror elements in it. Of course it's not really a horror film, but uh, I still really enjoy Hellboy. Uh, this is written and directed by... Garamel Del Toro, who of course directed movies like Mimic, The Devil's Backbone, uh, Blade 2, um, Kronos, and he would go on to direct Pam's Labyrinth, and he directed the sequel to this movie, which I know a lot of people love the sequel, but uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the sequel myself. Uh, I, I personally prefer the first one, but that's just me. Uh, I know... I might get shit for that, but I personally prefer the first Hellboy movie, but yeah, Hellboy I think is a great movie, it's very fun, um, it's not really a horror film, but I would definitely recommend it. Uh, next we got the first Saw movie, which I personally really like the first Saw movie, um, and the first Saw movie is really actually kind of a crime drama slash thriller in a way, uh, Yo, but I really enjoy the first Saw movie. It has Danny Glover in it. Um, I know the Saw series really went downhill after a while, but I really enjoy the first few movies. Like, And I also want to talk about Saw 2, which I also really like, and Saw 3. Um, personally, the first three Saw movies I actually think are really good. Um, after Saw 3, yeah, that's when it pretty much started to go downhill for me. But, you know, uh... The first three Saw movies, I personally think, are really good movies. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is Constantine, which stars uh, Keanu Reeves. And uh, this is another movie that I really enjoy. Um, you know, uh, I know a lot of people don't like this. This is based on a DC comic book series, which I know was originally called Hellblazer. And... Um, you know, and apparently this movie's actually very different from the comics. I never read the comics, so I wouldn't know. Um, one thing that's interesting is apparently the character of Constantine from the Hellblazer comics actually originated in the Swamp Thing comic books, actually. But, uh, 
you know, apparently the movie's very different. I never read them, so I wouldn't know. But the movie is about a man named John Constantine who, ever since he was a child, he had the ability to see demons, and he actually killed himself when he was 15 years old, but then he somehow... Then he somehow came back to life, but after he killed himself, he was in hell, and now he's being visited by the angel Gabriel, who keeps telling him that eventually he is going to hell, and, you know, so he's actually trying to pretty much buy his way into heaven, like, he becomes a demon hunter, and he's trying to essentially, um, he's trying to, like, pretty much kiss God's ass, basically, and, you know, uh, you know, he hunts demons pretty much only so God will eventually let him into heaven. Uh, it's a pretty interesting premise. Um, I, personally, I really enjoy the movie. So yeah, that's Constantine. Uh, the next movie I want to talk about is a film called Stay. And this is a movie that I actually really enjoyed. Uh, this is about a psychologist who gets this patient, and the patient is claiming that he's going to kill himself eventually, and, you know, uh, it gets into this whole, like, um, supernatural thing, like, uh, I don't, I really don't want to give too much away, but this is one I really enjoyed. So the next movie I want to talk about is The Descent, which, this is a freaking great movie, The Descent, uh, Basically, it's about, um, this group of women who were friends in, like, college, I believe, and, like, every year they get together, and what happens is the year before, uh, something very tragic happened to one of them. Uh, her husband and daughter were killed in a car accident, but what happens is the year after they go cave diving on, in these caves in somewhere in North America, and what happens is, uh... They end up getting trapped in these caves, and it turns out there are these creatures in the caves, but that's actually not really the main focus of the story, though, which is something I really like. It's really about this one woman who lost her husband and daughter, and throughout the movie you do start to see her slowly start to go kind of insane, and in some ways you could look at the title of the movie as being almost, shall I say, symbolic of what she's going through, like, she's going through, like, maybe a descent into insanity, basically. Uh, but yeah, The Descent is a great movie. Uh, uh, the next movie I want to talk about is a movie I don't have on DVD, but I have seen the film before, and you can actually watch this movie on YouTube. Uh, the movie is called, and I'm probably gonna butcher the title of the movie, but I believe it's pronounced Norana the Curse, or Noranai the Curse. Uh, I'm just gonna call it The Curse, and it's a Japanese horror film, uh, and it's basically like a found footage kind of movie, kind of in the same vein as something like The Blair Witch Project, and but it's done in like a documentary style, like it's essentially like made to be like, uh, it's made to look like a real documentary, of course, it's not real. Like, it's a mockumentary, I guess. And, uh, but it's a really, really creepy movie. Like, it's probably one of the creepiest movies I've ever seen in my life. Uh, you know, like, um, the found footage genre, it's a genre that I personally do like when it's done right. And, you know, and this movie, Narana the Curse, I would put right up there with the Blair Witch Project as being, like, one of the most effective found footage movies, and, you know, it's a movie I would definitely recommend. Uh, like I said, I don't have it on DVD because, to my knowledge, I don't think it's available on DVD here in the States yet. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is Pan's Labyrinth, which came out in 2007, and this is actually a Spanish movie, and it's not really a horror film, it's more of a drama film, actually, but, um, I guess it can be considered kind of a horror film, I know some people do consider it to be horror, uh, but it's more drama slash fantasy, but this is, um, directed, written and directed by Guillermo del Toro, who also directed Hellboy, and... This is just a freaking great movie. It's an extremely depressing movie, though. Um, basically, it's like, uh, this is actually, uh, Guillermo del Toro actually considers this to be a 
um, kind of like a companion piece to another movie he did called The Devil's Backbone, because this movie, like The Devil's Backbone, is set during the time of the Spanish Civil War, and it's, uh, you know, it's also a supernatural-themed movie, like The Devil's Backbone was, and... Yo, uh, but it's a really good movie, and what I like about it is it's like a fantasy movie, but it's also a war movie as well, and, you know, and you're not, and all the fantasy elements that are in the movie, you're not sure if they're really, if they're actually real, if they're just going on in this girl's head, uh, and, like, if it's this girl trying to, like, um, almost, like, escape the realities of her world, because... Um, the movie, I think, does do a really good job at showing, uh, what the time period, like, the movie's set during, in Spain during the time of the Spanish Civil War, um, so it, I do feel like it does a good job at, like, setting the whole mood for the time period, and it does have a very, the movie has a very bleak tone, and, you know, it's just a really good movie, I highly recommend it. Uh, the next movie I want to talk about is 1408, which, uh, which stars Samuel Jackson and John Cusack, and this is based on a short story by Stephen King, and I have read the short story, and the short story was actually published in Stephen King's collection of short stories, uh, Everything's Eventual, and actually my YouTube uh, channel is partly named after this movie, 1408, uh, because obviously my YouTube channel is Canto 1408, so... But yeah, um, 1408 I think is a really good movie. Um, basically it's about this, like, author who writes books about, uh, haunted houses, and he ends up staying at this, uh, room in this hotel in New York City, which is apparently haunted, and, uh, it turns out it is haunted. Uh, it's a really good movie, I definitely recommend it. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is... Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween, which I personally really enjoyed. I know a lot of people hate this movie, but I personally en enjoyed it. Uh, the movie has uh, Mike Malcolm McDowell in it, uh, and it has uh, Brad Dourif in it, who of course played uh, the voice of Chucky in the Child's Play movies, and he played Billy Bibbit in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, you know, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this myself. I know a lot of people hate it, but... I enjoyed it. So, the next movie I want to talk about is 30 Days of Night, which is actually produced by Sam Raimi and Robert Tabor, who, of course, are famous for the Evil Dead movies. Um, but this is a movie I really liked. Uh, I remember seeing it in theaters, actually, when it came out, and this is based on a graphic novel by, uh, by uh, Steve... Uh, Niles, or uh, I'm probably not saying his last name right, but uh, I read the graphic novel. I thought it was pretty good. Um, but yeah, 30 Days of Night is a pretty good movie. Uh, what's interesting is the graphic novel actually had a few sequels to it, and they actually uh, did make a movie um, based on the second graphic novel in the 30 Days of Night series. Um, but the movie went straight to DVD, and I'm not sure if it's any good or not. But, uh, yeah, 30 Days of Night, I think, is a really good movie. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is The Girl Next Door, which came out in 2007. And this is probably one of the most disturbing and depressing movies I've ever seen in my life. And it's also really unsettling, too. Um... Yo, this movie is based on a book by Jack Ketchum, which I have read, and the book I absolutely love, um, but the book is also very disturbing and very depressing, and this movie, um, both this movie and the book are loosely based on the Sylvia Likens case, which is, um, look that case up, it's a really horrible case, um, horrible as in what happened to this girl, but, uh, it's a really interesting case as well, and this movie and the book are not bios, um, like, they're fictional stories, but, um, they're loosely based on what happened to that girl, Sylvia Likens, and I really enjoyed this movie, um, it's a very depressing movie, um, and it's a very disturbing movie, actually, but, um, if you're not, like, if you can handle, um, 
really disturbing and depressing movies, I would definitely recommend this. Um, so yeah, that's The Girl Next Door. The next movie I want to talk about is The Mist, which is written and directed by Frank Darabont and based on a novella by Stephen King. Um, now, Frank Darabont, of course, has done uh, two other Stephen King adaptations. He did uh, The Green Mile and The Shawshank Redemption. And Frank Darabont is an amazing director, in my opinion. He also directed the first season of The Walking Dead, and he even uh, co-wrote A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. Uh, he co-wrote the remake of The Blob. He's done a lot of stuff, actually, and... Uh, Yo, The Mist, I think, is a really good movie, and it's pretty true to the book, except for the ending. They, the movie has a different ending than the book did, and to be honest, I do prefer the ending of the book, but uh, even though I don't really care for the ending of this, I think the rest of the movie is really good, and I would definitely recommend this if you haven't seen it. So yeah, that's The Mist. Uh, the next movie I want to talk about is Cloverfield, which... Cloverfield, I actually really like. Uh, this is a found footage movie, and it's a pretty interesting, like, it's basically a giant monster movie, but done in, like, a found footage kind of style, and I actually really liked that, and, you know, and I liked in this movie how they never explain what the monster is or anything like that, uh, Yo, and I really enjoyed this movie. Now, the movie's uh, produced by J.J. Abrams. Uh, yo, and it's... Uh, and I know one of the people behind this movie also went on to do that movie, Cabin in the Woods. I think it was the writer of the movie. I'm not sure if it was the writer or the director who went on to do Cabin in the Woods. But Cloverfield is a great movie. I would definitely recommend Cloverfield if you haven't seen it. Uh, the next movie I want to talk about is Eden Lake, which is about this uh, couple who uh, go to this go out to this lake for this like uh, getaway. And what happens is uh, they have a run-in with these kids. And at first, these kids come off as being like just these like snot-nosed kids, like pain in the ass kids. But it turns out that these kids are freaking psychotic and. Uh, you know, end up going after this couple, and, uh, you know, this is a really good movie, and the ending of this movie, dear God, is the ending of this movie depressing as hell. Uh, this is certainly not a feel-good movie, and I wouldn't recommend this movie if you're easily depressed, but, yeah, um, Eden Lake, it's a movie I would recommend, but it doesn't have a happy ending, though, just keep that in mind. Uh, the next movie I want to talk about is Paranormal Activity, which is um, a found footage horror film, and I actually really liked this. Uh, yo, um, if and if you do like, honestly though, this movie did not need sequels. Of course, they made like three sequels to this, all of them unneeded in my opinion. But the first Paranormal Activity movie is actually a pretty creepy movie in my opinion, uh, yo, I mean, and I think this was made originally as, like, an independent film, but, uh, yo, but it ended up becoming, like, uh, pretty much like a cultural phenomenon now, and it spawned three, uh, really unneeded sequels. I've only seen the second sequel, though, uh, I mean the second one, um, I haven't seen the third or fourth one, but I heard the fourth one sucked, like, really badly, um, but yeah, Paranormal Activity, the first one, I think is a pretty good movie. And the final movie I want to talk about is Splinter, which is which came out in 2009. And this is about a couple that gets kidnapped by this um, by this like uh, drug addict and his uh, girlfriend. And what happens is they end up at this gas station, and now there's this parasite that is going around, and basically this parasite, like, causes, like, these splinter things to grow out of your body, uh, it's a really interesting movie, um, I would definitely recommend it, so, yeah, that's, um, my video of my favorite horror films, which came out from 2000 to 2009, I hope you enjoyed it, and bye.